You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for August 16th, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance Headquarters, where it is very much back to school week. Oh, yes, it is. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Drift Glass. Happy anniversary, Blue Gal. Oh, oh my oh. goodness. Yes, I know. That's That came as a surprise. That wasn't in our notes. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I figured it was yeah. my turn to be uh, pulling stuff out of thin air. So that there you go. Like, there you like go. The right thing. We mm-hmm. will have been married for eight years on Monday. That's right. Eight How years. How exciting. Very much so. Very, very. I yeah. love you. Happy anniversary. You too. Thank you. Happy anniversary. I'm, I'm a very lucky man. I'm a very I, lucky woman. So there you go. I have spent much of this week uh, teaching um, the youngest child to drive. This is This is just getting to be like... An insane personal saga. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> because we have three children, as you uh-huh. most of you know, and mm-hmm. all three of them want cars. As of it's some sort of seed has sprouted yes, in their they want brains. Access to cars, vehicles, driver's licenses. They want freedom. Is what they want. They want freedom from parents. Yeah, and yes. independence. And and yes. of course, they know everything. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, and they're all they're all lovely, and I took my uh, youngest child out for a very long drive yesterday. Oh, did you? Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah, highway and stop here, and w- this is you this went is all how the way went. to Taylorville. We went we went past Taylorville. Though. Oh my goodness! Um, yeah, and we went out there so that middle child could look at a car. So you know, it's <laughs> it's just it's so weird. It, it, it you can tell back to school is coming because they're they're starting to stack their oh can we do this and can we do this and can we do this all on like the same day yeah so it looks like a bad project planners planning where everything's due on friday right so it's just an empty week and everything's black on friday yeah Uh, however what i meant to say was i have been counting my blessings all week because um it's just everyone's doing okay and everyone is um uh doing things that we have every reason to be very proud of and i'm married to a my soulmate and a beautiful yeah. woman and i'm just i'm a i everything considered i'm a very lucky man i'm a very privileged and lucky man and i want to make every make sure because i'm gonna start bitching in a couple yeah, of minutes right, about right <laughs> about a lot em- of things employment and income and all those other things it's yeah. sort of yeah there's there are stresses and of course there's stresses uh you know every email that i now get from work is pretty much subject line this asshole again <laughs> you know? yeah. it's just yeah. There there's no yes. uh it's it's getting not we've gone beyond exhaustion to slight yeah. boredom and, and not normalizing, but just well, kind of punch drunk. Punch, you know, it's like on, wow. You know, enough already, yeah. right? And mm-hmm. I feel as though this week there just weren't enough Monty Python clips yes. to match yeah. yes, the weren't. news. We we were just mm-hmm. continually here's this elected official saying yeah, but mm-hmm. rape and incest are the foundations of a good civilization, aren't they? Right. 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 Yeah. Uh, so it just seemed like there wasn't enough insanity to respond to the insanity that keeps coming across our screens. Well, and it's the end of summer. Yeah. And uh, most of the people, not all, but many of the people who are regularly in charge of reading things on television have been away on vacation or are away or swapping out or taking part time. Um, I, I swear to God, the sequel to the five people you'll meet in heaven is going to be the five people you'll meet at high V. Cause <laughs> I, I go over there, right? There's five people I, I haven't seen in a million years all at once. And they're all back from vacation. Right. right. Um, so there's this very much this sense of, oh, oh, okay. A lot of things happened and a lot of it's crazy and we should all get caught up now. And we're like, dude, we've been like doing this we haven't been on vacation right, no. <laughs> we've, been just, we've been on this and on this and on this for a long time it has that end of summer beginning of the work week congress is coming back in a little bit and things are going to get you know much uh uglier very quickly and 
So right. th- that's sort of the week that we're having. That's the sort of week we are. We're, we're betwixt and between, as my mom used to say. And the sort of downtime has permitted a lot of uh, uh, stupid people to have much bigger platforms than they should ever have had in their entire life. A lot of bad decisions by a lot of people exactly. in uh, high up in the media who should, and I'm sure damn well do know better. Right. This was the week when Joe Walsh, not, not the musician, scampered down the rat line away from the GOP directly onto the op-ed page of the New York Times. Right. Now, if you don't know who Joe Walsh is, that's you're, you're, you can be forgiven for that. He's the person that Lawrence O'Donnell... Uh, used to call a liar to his face, mm-hmm. deadbeat Joe, because he wouldn't pay his child support. He is a is a failed one term congressman from the north suburbs of Illinois, who is a crackpot, who's a, a loud Tea Party racist asshole crackpot. Always has he's always he always speaks at 120 decibels. He's always screaming about socialism and the liberals destroying America. Mm-hmm. He's a prototypical right wing fucking lunatic. Well, we spent way too much time on Joe Walsh. I do want to know why he got a New York Times column, though. That's well, the that's important the thing. thing. I, I just want to give you a little background. So, and 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 he 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 then became it then became the climate change science is a scam Heartland Institute. This is the same place where Ben Dominich got his name, got his money. So, right wing crazy crackpot Joe Walsh. And was I'm going to I'm going to stop you again because the important reason that uh-huh. he got kicked out of Congress. Yes. Was he was known for yelling at liberals and being yes. yelly, yelly, yell, yell. Mm-hmm. And he decided to yell at white women who were his constituents. Right. At He's coffee awful. shops and bars. And, and instead of having a conversation with a constituent, he saw it as a shouting match. And yes. all of that got put on social media. And it he it, he had a very difficult time hiding the fact that he was simply a misogynist crackpot. Yes. So... so- why does this one-term failed crackpot right-wing lunatic with a shitty radio show have a column in the New York Times, guest column in the New York Times this week? Because he called Trump a poopy poop head and said, what we really need is a challenge to Trump from the right. And how disappointed he is that the people on the right of Donald Trump haven't rallied to true conservative principles. And the problem I have with that is all of these same credulous liberals who I like and who are my allies going, oh, Joe Walsh, he's on our team now. No, Joe Walsh is not on your team now. Joe Walsh will cut your kidneys out and sell them. And then you'll wake up with Tom Cotton in the White House. Joe Walsh is absolutely not to be trusted. He hasn't changed at all. But he, for the moment, finds it politically convenient to call Donald Trump an asshole because he wants the party to move even further right. And therefore, because of that, um, the Schulzberger family decided, you know what? This guy needs a column in the fucking New York Times. That's what this crackpot fringe nut needs. And it's been a week of that. It's been Charles Koch being given a column in the Washington Post Mm -hmm. to write David Brooks fan fiction. And it's just been like, there is absolutely no one in charge of the editorial side of these, the op-ed side of these newspapers who isn't an absolute jelly spine sellout uh and it's just it's pathetic and but what's really happening is you can see it happening you and i have talked about this a lot they're building a lifeboat they're building a lifeboat they're building a whole armada of lifeboats because once once trump is gone uh i mean you want to talk about charles coke for a minute or you want to Sure, go right ahead. Well, Charles Koch uh, owes me $15 million. Is, it was the title <laughs> of my book this week. Charles Koch, uh, the, of the Koch brothers, uh, net worth of his him and his brother uh, is $120 billion. They have spent the last 40 years um, heavily funding the Republican Party to turn it into the right-wing crackpot monster factory it has become. Um had an op-ed, bought himself or was warded or, or gifted a, an op-ed in the uh, in the Wall Street Journal, uh, I'm sorry, in the, in the Washington Post, uh, where he said, you know, we've tried partisan politics and partisan politics just don't work. And and it really is the extremes on both sides, I think, that are, that are really a problem. Now, this is, these are people who have funded every right-wing think tank, every right-wing crackpot candidate, who have invented media outlets, who, who just have poured over the course of their lives billions of dollars into creating the Republican Party that produced Donald Trump. And in fact, just a year ago, just a year ago, 
Charles Koch said, we've made more progress in the last five years than I've seen in the previous 50. The capabilities we have now can take us to a whole new level. That was one year ago. Mm -hmm. In the Washington Post this week, the same guy wrote, for several years, we supported efforts in, the partisan, in partisan politics with the goal of moving the United States forward. The results fell far short of we, what we considered acceptable. Worse, partisan efforts on both sides have made it harder to come together as a country. Womp, Fuck womp. you. Yeah. And so um, a guy named Ken Vogel uh, ruthlessly doxed this poor man. <laughs> no, he didn't. He just looked up the F FC. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. He just looked up the FEC filing right. and found out in the FEC. last several years, Charles Koch had personally given $15 million to nothing but Republican right. causes. And I'm like, dude. If you're going to play this David Brooks game of you've been a Republican your whole life and, and when you got your teeth knocked out, when all of your policies have failed spectacularly, you're going to sit there on the op-ed page of a newspaper with a bunch of other neocon assholes and say, the problem is really both sides. We've tried this whole partisan thing. And I think we should talk now about my spiritual journey and right. how we need to fund a third way, some sort of no labels effort, some sort of centrist project to bring us together as a people. To do that, you really have to shut the fuck up if all you've ever given to is people on the right. So I just suggested that he give like 0.001% of his net worth to us. <laughs> and so that he would be then supporting both sides, right? <laughs> then he could say, hey, wait, just wait a week, just wait a week. Because you know what? We're partisans. Absolutely, Absolutely. We are partisans. We think the Republican Party is the existential threat to this country and needs to be destroyed root and branch. So we are absolute partisans. We think there's no point in even talking to Republicans because they're all scum. If you're still a Republican, it's 2019, you are hopeless and dead from the neck up. So give us 12 million bucks, 13, 50 a million dollars. Of, then a wait, fraction, just a, if you will, of what you've given Republicans. A fraction of a fraction of 1% <laughs> of your net worth. Just it, it's in your sofa. It's in your sofa cushions, right? We, we would publicize your fifteen million. million. <laughs> fifteen million. No, oh, yeah, because that's what he's given yeah. to Republicans yeah. over the last few years. So personally, person, not his organization. Say if he gave just us personally. fifteen thousand, that'd be fine. <laughs> no, that's to, no. You see, you have to say, look, on the one side and the other side. One, you know, you give us a fifteen thousand, and the other person, you give fifteen million. You really both can't sides, say you've gotten you can't, your feet that's not wet. Both sides tried enough? both sides. Okay. So, right, right. So. Every other both siderist asshole is clever enough to actually hide their financial contributions or their in-kind contributions from, from public sight. Mm -hmm. You've done it out in public. So that's the solution. Give us a bunch of money and then turn around and say, you know what? I, I tried. tried doing both sides and it just didn't and, work. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's still – we, would, we will then, remain hopelessly partisan, I promise mm -hmm. you, and, and prove your point. Yes. And then, <laughs> then you can go back to doing what you want to do because they – took a half a billion dollars in the last election in 2018 half a billion dollars the, in the entire coke organization and just mm -hmm. set it on fire yeah. <laughs> and it didn't do any good at all they lost everywhere in the last election and suddenly after they lost everywhere they decided you know partisan yeah, politics I'm so is tired so mean of it right and cruel and oh we should find a third way yeah well you've run out of yeah. one way haven't you yep. that's the problem so what they really want to do is join every other conservative asshole who wants to pretend they're independent or a third way person and this but this will give you the window to do that then you can turn around and fund your right wing flop house the republicans can dress up as independents and have coffee and cake and dry hump each other until the coast is clear because that's the plan we're all going to pretend we're independents and that we believe in the third way and 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 bottom up governance and and civic virtue and all that shit that you have no interest in until the coast is clear, until there's a Democrat back in the White House. And then we can go back to being the same old backstabbing billionaire asshole well, who always And we know, ex the we know exactly what's going to happen in a minute. A Democrat of course puts we do. Their, her hand on the Bible, right? It's right. already happened. It's already happened three times, yeah. twice already. The minute Clinton was sworn in, suddenly Republicans got real interested in a bunch of shit they didn't care about when Reagan and Bush were president. The minute Obama was sworn in, the Republicans got real interested. I'm sorry, the independents. The independents were, were very, very worried about the deficit all of a sudden. Oh, the deficit. Oh, my. And yeah. the Kenyanism and all the death panels and whatnot. And it turns out, oh, my God, the Tea Party and the independents were, all, were Republicans all along. Who could have warned us about this? And we are now looking at a third iteration of the same lie. Same thing. Yep. And yep. the only way it works, the only way it works is if people who are our allies 
and people in the media continue to give these assholes the benefit of the doubt because they'll stab you. They've done it before and they haven't changed one iota. All they're doing is looking for the current crisis to clear so they can go back to looting the country and blaming us for all their problems. Exactly. Exactly. And they do that after every shooting and they do that after after their president shits the bed. And it's true. They just lay low, rebrand, and they're back again to take away your Medicare and Social Security. That's what they're about. Uh, and start a war overseas. <laughs> Period. That's what that's what's coming. I'm telling you right now, that is what is coming. If you let these people back into the media, if you keep giving these people a place at the table, if you keep treating them as credible allies and friends, or at least worthy of a place at the table, what you're going to get is Tom Cotton in the White House and a whole bunch of liberals flopping their jaws wondering how the fuck yep. this happened. And people like me will be saying, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done warning you morons who keep making the same goddamn mistake over and over again. You're clearly too stupid to govern. I mean, uh, Republicans are too evil to govern, but you guys are really too stupid to govern because you keep giving your enemies a sword to stab you with. You and, and you don't have to. You don't have to. But you keep doing it and they keep doing it and you keep acting shocked when you look down and there's a sword through your chest. So stop being stupid. Stop giving bad guys the benefit of the doubt. They don't deserve it. They haven't earned it. And if they want to earn it, great. A little repentance, a little atonement, a little confession. Have a public meeting where we discuss the history of the Republican Party going back 50 years and how things got to be so bad. Uh huh. But uh -huh. short of that, I'm not going to trust these people ever again. And there's no reason to. They have given me no reason to trust them. And every time I crack open the newspaper, I see more proof about why my opinion is correct and I'm going to stick to it until I'm proven proven wrong. And that's the good thing about being a liberal. If you prove me wrong, I will change my mind. But nothing I've seen in the last 30 years convinces me anything other than these people are simply flopping on your couch waiting for the storm to pass. In our local paper, what happens when Republicans do something awful? What happens when something Republicans do something drastic? Suddenly, as I pointed out last week, my local paper forgets how to spell Republicans. It's it's the system. It's Congress. Uh, this this week, um, Jeb Bush was all concerned about the deficit and blamed D.C. for not doing anything about it. Je Jeb Bush, who apparently has no idea who the Republican Party is or who his fucking brother is. And no one you know, dragged him out by his hair in public and said, say Republican into the microphone, asshole. Say George W. Bush. Say it, and, and then then we can have a conversation. But if you are that fucking dishonest that you can't even admit that your brother was the one that broke the country and ran up deficits because you needed giant tax cuts, and then when all the damage is done, you sit on your ass and blame D.C. and the system and everyone else. That's That's where he transgresses as far as I'm concerned, because I don't want him to be Liz Cheney and willing to sacrifice his own family no. for politics, as she did. I'm not no. I'm not asking him to do that. I'm not asking him to kick his brother in the groin, you know, politically. But to then turn around and blame DC or the system or Washington or Congress or anything but the Republican mm -hmm. Party that passed the tax cut for billionaires while concern trolling about the deficit, you know, which is a a precede, right? He's seeding the argument to say, I was mm -hmm. against the deficit during the Trump administration. Yeah. So you can't tell me that I flipped on a dime against Republicans. I already said so. No, he yeah. doesn't get away with that. Yeah. Drew Class, did you see, this isn't in our notes, but did you see the article in the New York Times this week about Cordelia Scaife May of the Scaifes, no. of the Richard Mellon Scaife fortune? She was a scaife heiress, you know, Mellon scaife. She's she's dead now. She died in 2005, mm -hmm. but... You mean the Richard Mellon scaife people that funded the entire Arkansas project and tried to bring down the Clinton family and were conspiracy-mongering multi-billionaire? Right. Exactly, yeah. that one. Yeah. Exactly. Yep, yep, that guy. Richard Mellon scaife did all of that. Uh, his sister, Cordelia scaife May, was much uh, less a public figure. She stayed under the wire. Uh -huh. She... I think I did see this. Yeah. Yeah. She loved birds. She loved going birding in Michigan. She uh, did not get her name in the paper and so forth. But she started out as uh, an environmentalist worried about overpopulation. She was always very pro birth control, mm -hmm. very pro women's rights about abortion. 
uh, very concerned about overpopulation. And um, her husband committed suicide at some point, and she became uh, a little nutty. And uh, not that sure. that kind of tragedy wouldn't mm-hmm. affect you in some way. I'm not certainly not criticizing her for that. But uh, she wound up being an mm-hmm. anti-immigration uh, person and talking about people as animals. And so she really went full bigot, racist, anti-immigration. And her money and her foundation is still funding the kind of think tanks and so forth that uh, produced Stephen Miller. And uh, this Times report about why an heiress spent her fortune trying to keep immigrants out, uh, you know, she became a nativist. She became really about Mm -hmm. America first and America looks like I do. Um, And as I read this article and this, there's a couple of articles, uh, what really becomes clear to me is just plain and simple, the concentration of wealth. Yes, yes, yes. Concentration of wealth has got to go. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, no. And it it doesn't matter whether, you know, your your heart is in the right place and you're going to fund schools and you're going to do the right thing with your money or you're not going to do the right thing with your money. The problem is there's always going to be a crackpot who will do tremendous evil with billions of dollars yes. and we you just can't have it. And so yes, I'm a socialist. Yes, yes. I'm yes, I'm interested in redistributing wealth. Absolutely. Well, and there'll always be a fan excuse me, there'll always be a fan base of multi-billionaires mm-hmm. who will fund any ideology that says multi-billionaires are superior to everyone else and shouldn't be regulated or taxed. Exactly. So, exactly. you know, you, that's yeah. why Ayn Rand just said, look, you know who I'm going to side with? I'm going to side with the rich guys. I'm going to make them yep. the martyrs. They're like Jesus. They're so wonderful. They're just like freaking Jesus. And Jesus, by the way, is a lie. And I hate that. And organized religion is just as bad as organized communism, which was a straight up Ayn Rand belief. So you, anybody with this, I mean, I'm, I'm very tall. Okay. Um, right. <laughs> if you would like to, me to join your group that say tall people should rule the world, you know what? I'm going to be biased in that kind of direction over there. I'm gonna, you know what? You know what? I like your, I like where this is going. I'd, I'd like to read your pamphlet. So the idea that you have a bunch of people who, who say that the greatest people in the world, the most moral people in the world, the people who have the most money, and they should rule us because they are better than us, which is, a, which is the fundamental you know, tenant on the Republican side. That's what they really believe, that – Wealthy people are superior to everyone else because they are wealthy and they should and they should be able to buy elections and they should be able to buy speech and they should be able to buy television stations and tell people what to think, think and say and believe. And they should be able to own the marketplace. And that is such a fundamentally undemocratic concept. That is exactly what the founders didn't want to happen. Concentrated wealth in the hands of a few people that become an aristocracy that rule over everyone because they have an overwhelming advantage in every venue you can't beat them because they have already they already own 90 percent of the playing field yeah and it is high time that we talk about in a very serious public way that that's the problem and as long as there's a as long as there's a party and and the democrats are you know no saints when it comes to this but the republicans have sold their soul to this right if, if, you're, if you're competing against a billionaire believe me our last governor was a billionaire. Mm-hmm. We hired a Democratic billionaire to beat him. We get it. It's unfair. Right. And nobody but a Democratic billionaire could have beaten him. That's just the way politics are now. I wish they weren't that way. I really do. But as long as you have to go to the well of big money to win in politics, this is always going to be a problem because it'll, it'll always come with strings attached. And this is what drives me, frankly, insane and a lot of other people like us insane about wealthy liberals. Wealthy liberals do not want to fund liberal media infrastructure. Liberal political action and, and they media. Yeah. They just don't. I don't know why. They just don't. And maybe it's not sexy. Maybe they don't get their name on the... On the well, maybe but they, they just don't. fundamentally object to billionaires influencing the political process the way they do. But that means you leave the field to right-wing right. billionaire ideologues. So I get it when... Uh, I get it when George Soros focuses his attention on the United Nations High Commission on Refugees, mm-hmm. and he's doing a half a billion dollar fundraising effort on behalf of refugees in their home countries mm-hmm. to help them live a better life. And that is remarkable. Uh, yes. I, I applaud that as opposed to Jeff Bezos building his own spaceship to go, you know, wherever he wants to go. There are 
good ways to spend your money and and he's doing it uh but you're you are then leaving the field to the scafe family to hurt right. <laughs> hurt immigrants to hurt my migration to mm-hmm. influence politics so that immigrants are hurt so that stephen miller has a seat in the white house right forming policy and you know you could do a lot of good <laughs> Here I right. am, you know, listen, I know George Soros listens to this podcast, so sure. I'll give you some advice, George <laughs> Soros. You could do well, a lot to help refugees around the world if you would keep Republicans out of the White House and keep them yes. and, and take back the Senate. You wouldn't have yes. so many refugees to deal with. There'd uh, be a whole lot less problems right. downstream right. if you solve the problem upstream. You the can problem always upstream... be an angel investor for refugees. There will always be sure. an issue around the world with people migrating and needing help. But you could pre- you could do some preventative work <laughs> by keeping mm-hmm. the fascists out of office. That's what I now, say. I'll be honest. I'll be brutally honest. If I were a multi-billionaire, I'd probably build my own spaceship. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> saying. Would. And you'd, you'd wind it with science fiction paperbacks all the way around. I'd say, honey, <laughs> honey, I, I got some good news and I got some bad news. Um, you almost, don't look in the yard. You almost brought home a car with a stick shift this week. I did. I came very close to that. I realized <laughs> I'm good. I would be I murdered in my sleep. Me. I did yeah. that. I can drive a stick, but no. I If you came home and said, we've got a billion dollars and I'm building my own space rocket. I, uh-huh. I I would kind of question. I I want you to see a, the same doctor. I think Steve King should see. So yes, yes. I, uh, well, you know <sighs> that when you, I don't. I I understand big money theoretically. I've seen it in operation. I've seen it up close in operation. I've seen people that run companies who are profoundly incompetent. Yeah. and we're surrounded by yes men and toadies and stooges who never told them anything but that that the light of Jesus shone out of their ass. Right. So. And of course, they went off into bizarre directions because there was nobody to tell them otherwise. And I can't overlay that onto politics. But I really can't say how I would react if I had a lot of money because I've never pretended to be anything but low and perverse. <laughs> so if you put a, a billion dollars in my hand, man, I you cannot are, guarantee that I'd be like, you know what? You and I are just boots cool. on the ground activists with two laptops yeah. and a wire that goes to the internet. So. Uh, and I'm grateful for all that. I consider that a miracle in my life. So that's. Oh, that, yeah. That. No, no, it's 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 it gives me the opportunity. He said, segueing very awkwardly to another. Topic. Well, to to have a scoop. I had a scoop this week. You did. I, I want to hear about your scoop. And it, it's a, a it's a real scoop. It's, it's a, a genuine real scoop. scoop. A genuine scoop. No one else did it. And I did, I did some actual research and had a scoop. Um, mm-hmm. Fox and Friends, the president yes. of the United States favorite TV show. Mm-hmm. Uh, they did a segment on health care uh, in which they, uh, as they often do, tried to fear monger about how, you know, people are very upset about how they're going to lose. Uh, the Democrat Party is going to steal their private health insurance. They are. And here is, uh, you know, Griff. Griff is the substitute. Griff Jenkins, the substitute for Steve Ducey. Summer mm-hmm. substitute. <laughs> saying, Imagine telling your mom that my job <laughs> is substituting for Steve for Ducey. Steve Ducey yeah. in the summertime. And mm-hmm. saying, write us and tell us how terrified you are that the Democratic Party is going to take away your private health insurance. Yes. And we will put it on the air. And we they will. did. It. They do. And for most of them, they just used a first name and pretended like it was a letter for an email. Show us your tweets. Yeah. Show us your tweets. But yes. One of them was a tweet. Mm-hmm. And uh, this tweet said, as nearly all of them said, all nearly yeah. all of them were from people who were over 65, terribly yes, worried indeed. about losing their private health insurance. Now, mm-hmm. <laughs> I realize that people have Medicare Advantage programs and they have things that help pay for, for things over and above Medicare. But if you're writing into Fox and Friends at age over 65 to say how terrified you are of losing your health care to a political party, you should be writing about the Republican Party. Lindsey Graham has said on television to Laura Ingram, we have made promises to Medicare and Medicaid that we can't keep and that we need to fix entitlements, Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid that we can't keep. He said that out loud. I have video of that. So mm-hmm. if you're worried about your health care over the age of 65, you're talking to the wrong party. You absolutely are. 
Uh, but Fox and Friends put all these messages. Oh, I'm so afraid that I'm going to lose my health care, my pri- my private, private, private health care. Mm-hmm. And one of the people was Rhonda, and her tweet said, "I was in the emergency room all day yesterday with my mom, age 73. She says, leave my health care alone. I've paid for it my whole life. I've worked since I was 14." And they put that tweet on the air with her Twitter handle, with the date uh, listed, mm-hmm. so you could go and look it up. I could, and and I was the one who went and looked it up because I wanted to see if anyone had pushed back on Rhonda by the fact that her seventy three year old mother's in the emergency room. I'm sorry about that, but your seventy three year old mother is being hospitalized. That's Medicare Part A. All right. right. That is I don't absolutely know any, paid for by the government. Is there is there any private insurance that you pay into since the age of fourteen? I I'm I'm well, not aware of right. that. Right, she's paid. She's worked since fourteen, paying into Medicare and Medicaid, right, or uh-huh. Medicare and Social Security. So I went to look for the actual t- tweet to see if any. And and let me be clear, Fox and Friends put her Twitter handle up on the television screen. I do not want to take that and make a feeding frenzy of liberals going over and attacking her for saying that. That was not my intention, but I did want to see if anyone had pointed out to her, if your mom is in the hospital at age 73, that is public health insurance. That is not private health insurance. Mm -hmm. Uh, That hospitalization is covered under Medicare, period. That's it. Unless your mom is named Coke, it's probably (laughs) And she's in a private hospital where she's paid for the hospital. That's different, right? In in low Earth orbit for right, her heart, you know? right? Whatever, but no, I and I wasn't trying to start uh, a mob against this private citizen who's just had her name put up on the air. Mm-hmm. But I went to look for her tweet and see if there were any replies. And what did I find? But she had ended her tweet with the hashtag hashtag Leave Medicare Alone, mm-hmm. and Fox and Friends had deleted that. <laughs> On their television. They had not put leave Medicare alone on their screen. How helpful of them to just trim that little part out as inconvenient. Yes, as utterly inconvenient to their argument about private mm-hmm. health insurance. Leave Medicare alone. Now, <laughs> and I and that's that's the only point I have to make is that we know they're a propaganda network, but here they're caught red-handed. Yeah, real this and and as as we we talked about, I was just flabbergasted. Now I was so impressed that you had caught that. And the fact that this is this really is straight up Ministry of Truth style stuff. Yeah. Well, oh, this this part of the picture um, undercuts our arguments. So let's just airbrush it out. Right. Whoever, whoever is there. behind the premiere at the Red Square Parade, we're just going to yeah. air, airbrush that person out of the picture when yeah. when uh, they're murdered for for disagreeing with the Communist Party, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's and exactly they, they, what they, it is. Yeah. And now they're gone. So we can't make this an argument about Medicare because that's an argument we're going to lose. We're talking about private health insurance and how much everyone loves it and no one has any other form of insurance. And that's the way America is. And we can't have people talking about Medicare. So let's just snip that part out. We like to mention how comprehensively the right has poisoned our public dialogue. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's really important. I mean, there is really no other subject that's more important to, there's a lot of things that are more important to solve, a lot of problems that are more important to solve, but there's no issue standing in the way of solving every problem than the degree to which Republicans and conservatives have destroyed our ability to have a public conversation among adults about anything. You cannot talk to these people about anything. Climate change, gun control, birth control, immigration, it doesn't fucking matter. They're all brainwashed. So uh, as a challenge, to just point out how completely into the groundwater this Mm -hmm. poison has seeped, I pulled up a column from the Washington Post and a column from a crackpot in our local newspaper, or a, a, a letter to the editor in our local newspaper. You just read a couple sentences from me. Go right ahead, and I'll try to guess. I'll try to guess. Okay. Well, it, the, the first it sort of gives it away a little bit, but feel the feel the sentiment behind it. Feel the 
the the theater behind it. Regarding the article titled Trump words linked to more hate crimes, <laughs> notice the headline of the article, why didn't we see Obama linked to more hate crimes when he caused riots by his ethnic and racial bias? Why don't we see, quote, Democrats linked to more hate crimes when their rhetoric of white supremacy, homophobia, Nazi, Islamophobia, et cetera, et cetera, is unending? Could it be that the media, both in print and television, are so biased by everything progressive, socialist is good, and everything represents conservative is bad? All right, that's one. Here's the other one. I do not believe Trump is a racist, much less a white supremacist. I think the rhetoric of the Democratic candidates is incendiary and dangerous and also politically self-destructive. It's so absurd as to be laughable, but for its repetition. They don't wish to argue, debate, and persuade. They wish to smear and exclude, and they have exploited this shock and fear to do so. They should turn back. They should follow the example of Bobby Kennedy, as should Trump. Wow. We should all listen to Kennedy's plaintive words of 51 years ago to good effect. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's always, always the Democrats. The first one was from a local Republican crackpot who's in the paper about once a month. The second one was from Hugh Hewitt in the Washington Post this week. And they are in, in tone and sentiment, other than the fact that Hugh Hewitt, because he's talking to a national audience, has to serve it up with a little bit of a side of both sides. Mm -hmm. He can't go completely because he's in the Washington Post and he'd get dragged for that. But the fact that Hugh Hewitt is a lying, uncredible cyborg sent from the future to destroy America and a, a, just an abject failure as a decent human being and citizen and has a reserved seat at the Washington right. Post – and cranks out shit that sounds exactly like every Republican crackpot in our neighborhood tells you how completely polluted the right is. There is no one left over there. What is the greater mystery is why the New York Times thinks it's important to publish articles by Joe Walsh. Why does the Washington Post think Hugh Hewitt and Charles Koch really need to be heard from on anything? And the answer is no one who mm -hmm. works for these organizations or any other media organization has the balls to go stick a microphone in the face of Fred Hyatt or Dean Beckett over the New York Times and ask them that very question because they wouldn't get work anymore. Well, and I think it goes deeper and, than that because they won't talk about they won't talk about voting rights at all. They, they do not enter into gerrymandering and voting rights and actually giving voice to black people as a as an mm -hmm. argument as that is where both sides falls apart and i'm the hero of the week for me is stacy abrams i guess yes the she's fact amazing. that she she said there are good candidates running on the democratic side for president i can live with almost all of them uh -huh. certainly the top tier and i'm not going to run for president i'd be happy to serve on the ticket with any of them if that's where what it comes to but my focus is fair elections and voting rights for all. Mm -hmm. And that's where the battle needs to be. And it, the, the number one, both sides don't thing is voter suppression. Both sides don't suppress the vote. Both no. sides don't try to arrange it so that black people can't vote or so that their votes don't count. And so I see that as the machete that we need to use in these instances where, yeah. well, you know, Barack Obama was so divisive. Yeah. He was divisive because he was black and he sat his butt in the white house right. in the oval office. Right. That's why he was divisive because white people couldn't stand it. White Republicans couldn't stand his it. His existence was his existence. offensive. Yeah. And yeah. everything bad about him was a, was a boogeyman that lived under their bed that was mm -hmm. dragged out and imposed, superimposed over his face and his policies. There's nothing he did that that should have that deserved anything like the amount of uh, irrational, head snapping, racist hysteria that he engendered on the right. The 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 Wayne Lapierre telling Republicans to stock up to get your arsenals ready because he's going to kick in your door and take your guns away because that's what those people do. And those people, and, yeah, and them doing it. And, then, and, and uh, we're having the same kind of those people argument from the Fox and Friends viewing mm -hmm. Republican president that exists now right. with Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib of those people. Mm -hmm. Those people shouldn't be allowed in Israel. Those people shouldn't be allowed to travel. And it's that 
anti brown skin hysteria that is divisive. Yes, that divides sane people from insane people. Yeah. That divides Americans from racist bigots. Yeah. Yes, that is divisive. We are going to have a sharp dividing line between those two people. It's not good people on both sides. And that, that good people on both sides thing is actually, you know, an infusing teabag in the media as well as in the presidency, it right? Is. It is. Because we want everyone to come together and buy our dick pills and buy our pharmaceuticals that we're going to advertise between news segments. Mm-hmm. So don't get don't get caught up in that. Don't get caught up in, well, you know, we all need to come together as a nation now behind what? You're going to come behind Elizabeth, President Elizabeth Warren? Sure. No, they're not. They're going to say, well, Trump isn't president anymore. What about the deficit? And we need to fix entitlements. Right. And, you know, that'll be the January of 2021. They're going to say that. Right out that, of the box. That is coming. And, and the, this idea, and I've had this back and forth today with some people on Twitter, and Charlie Pierce has been talking to Neera Tandon, EJ Dion, because that's over the grownups table that conversation is going on. Um. But it's the same conversation, which is, well, we all need to get together and fight this one thing, which is Donald Trump. Once he's gone, then we're going to take these platforms away from these never Trumpers who are you know, really not on our side. And then we'll fight that battle. Like, dude, have you forgotten how we got here in the first place? We got here in the first place because Bush was a catastrophe, because Bush lies in the wrong war, because Bush broke the economy, because Bush ran up deficits. And after Bush... It was like, okay, let's take the Republican Party down. Oh, no, 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 no. We have all these problems we need to fix. This is so bad. We're just going to let the people who fucked us over slide right off the radar and go off into the tall grass and become independents and get jobs at the New York Times and jobs at the Washington Post where they can influence millions of people. And, and we're going to pretend the Tea Party is a whole brand new yeah, movement. And we're just yeah. going to, we're going to, and, and those of us who sat there banging our heads on the desk going, please, please stop doing this. Stop letting them off the hook. If you let them off the hook after they broke the government under George Bush, then they're going to come back even stronger next time. And now is the next time. And I hear from the same people saying, yeah, but Trump's really bad. I mean, he's worse than Bush. Well, Bush, again, broke the economy, lied us into the wrong war, got thousands of people killed, broke the treasury, ran up deficits. There was Katrina. There was Terry Schiavo. The list goes on and on and on and on. Bush was a fucking disaster. Bush was the worst president in history until Trump came along. And after he left office, the people who control our public agenda simply – our public conversation simply said, we're not going to pursue any of this. We're going to give Michael Gerson a job at the Washington Post. We're going to give David Frum, speechwriter, Bush speechwriter. We're going to give Mark Thiessen, a Bush speechwriter. We're going to give every Bush regime dead end or a, a privileged place in the media. We're going to pretend the Republican Party doesn't exist because we have real problems we've got to solve. And the minute Barack Obama put his hand on the Bible, suddenly it was deficit, 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 deficit which is exactly what's going to happen again. And I, I'm getting really fucking tired of liberals, I've said this already on this podcast, being this stupid, that mm-hmm. they're falling for it again. Because, it, no, Trump is Trump is horribly bad in his own way. But if you really think that the Republicans never used divisiveness before, I urge you to go Google John McCain's black baby. Yep. I go Google Karl Rove and anti-gay... Um, ballot initiatives during the election. Google Willie Horton, Google welfare queens. They've always been this way. This is what has moved the Republican base for 50 fucking years. They've just been doing it slightly below the surface. And now Donald Trump, all he's doing is saying the quiet part loud. And the idea that- And I did a a post this week called Republican presidents cheat. And it showed that since Nixon, it has been, they have had people doing that dirty work under the surface. And Mm -hmm. it's Roger Stone and Karl Rove are the two who are connected dots through Nixon, through Reagan, through Bush, and through Trump. And Mm -hmm. it's only that Trump is perfectly willing to let the Russians come in. He's perfectly willing to do the dirty tricks right on top of the surface and not pretend that he's not taking dark money or pretend that he's not conning people. Uh, He's totally grifting in plain sight obstructing justice in plain sight, uh, all the dirty tricks that, uh, you know, Roger Stone did for Nixon, uh, Mm -hmm. Trump is just coming out and saying, you know, at rallies. So uh, 
Well, that's what Charles Koch flipped out about. Yeah, not that right. Not that the policy was bad. That he's blabbing everything. Right. Right. You're supposed to do this shit quietly behind closed doors and not you're embarrass supposed to your, anyone at the country club. Right. right your right. treason is supposed to be private. You're supposed to conduct your treasons in a private room, and he's doing them out loud and in public. And if you think after Trump is gone, Jeff Zucker and Phil Griffin and Andy Leck are going to show Joe Walsh to the door or Charlie Sykes to the door and say, "Well, thank you very much. We're done with you now." Mm-hmm. No, they're gonna, you to the door liberals will be kicked out of the picture and the only people left on television or in print to talk about anything to do with politics are going to be charlie sykes and bill crystal on the left and eric bowling and joe walsh on the right yeah and you and i are going to have no voice anywhere if you are dumb enough to think that this time lucy won't pull the football away because this time things are really bad no it doesn't matter how bad it is because none of the people involved in the decision making are affected by this in any way. No one's kicking in Dean Beckett's door. No one's threatening their children. No one's putting their kids in cages. These people are perfectly safe. These people live in a hermetically sealed bubble where none of this shit affects them personally in any way. The minute it does affect them personally, you see them rise up on their hind legs and freak out. That's why uh, Arthur Schulzberger went to the Wall Street Journal. He's the, he's the publisher, the owner of the New York Times, went to the Wall Street Journal to write an editorial about First Amendment rights mm-hmm. and attacks on the press by Trump. Nothing else Donald Trump did caused Arthur Schulzberg to come off the mountain and get angry about anything. But you come after his newspaper personally, he's going to call up his friends at the, Wall- at the Wall Street Journal and say, I want to do an editorial on your paper. And of course, you know, they're all friends. So of course, they're going to say yes. But nothing moves them other than personal threats to their enterprises. Yeah. All right, Drift Class, we're going to do a news roundup. And I just wanted to thank uh, a listener, Anthony, who wrote us and said, can you please save some spleen in your next podcast about the alt-right attacks on 15-year-old climate activist Greta Thunberg? Uh, Greta has autism. She has high functioning. uh, Well, that's not the term they use anymore. Uh, She says Asperger's uh, about herself. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is a blessing for her. It has allowed her to focus very intently on climate change, <laughs> which, you know, uh-huh. we, we love her for that. Uh, we know about uh, obsessive interest in our household very mm-hmm. much. Uh, Anthony says, this is the first time I've cried with anger in a while that they went after uh, Greta Thunberg. Uh, she doesn't want to meet with Trump because she does, Trump doesn't take climate change seriously and he's harming the planet. And uh, because of that, right wingers decided to attack her for uh, her condition. And uh, yeah, because that's, you know, when when you're following a fascist dictatorship, that's what you do. Right. That's very on brand for very on brand. Yeah. For the alt right to attack someone for being different. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and being right. God help her, <laughs> God she's help her, right. She's right, exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. So uh, we are grateful to Greta Thunberg for her work, and uh, keep it up, Greta. All right, news roundup. You want to start? Sure. The House Judiciary Committee subpoenaed, remember this guy, former Trump campaign manager Corey Lewandowski, and former CNN employee Corey Lewandowski, and then back to working for Donald Trump, Corey Lewandowski to testify publicly about potential obstruction of justice by Trump. He, uh, Donald Trump is trying to invoke something called super duper executive privilege, uh, which does not exist in order to block uh, him from testifying, despite the fact that uh, Lewandowski never actually worked in the administration. Right. Executive but privilege again, is talking to the quote unquote president of the United States about presidential decision making in mm-hmm. the White House. Corey Lewandowski yeah. never held a job where there would be any executive yeah. privilege whatsoever. Well, and Donald Trump is used to getting people who work for him to sign NDAs so that he can trash them and molest and them and do all sorts of horrible yes, things. Right. And then then say, you can't talk about it because it's, you know, NDA. That's how he's used to operating. And that's how yeah, he's a fascist. This is what he this is how he behaves. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu blocked representatives Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib from visiting Israel after Trump ordered him to on Twitter. Yes. Uh, and, do it. Do and it. And I have to say, uh there are a lot of pro-Israel and Jewish groups around the country that have varying uh, missions and different attitudes, but they were pretty much united, mm-hmm. including everybody yeah. from APAC to ADL to far yeah. left, 
peace organizations yes. were all saying, no, this is not right. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. So that was a remarkable uni unity message coming from all of those groups to say, no, if Israel is going to be a democracy, this is how it's got to be. You have to allow right. people that disagree with you to come into the country. But you know who didn't need to hear another goddamn word about this? Rush Limbaugh. Because he said, <laughs> he said, Ilan Omar and Rashid Shalib have hatred for Jews and quote, I don't have to know. I don't have to know them to know this. All I have to know is Sharia Islam. Sharia Islam. Mind Isn't you, that somebody who came to a birthday party at our house last yeah. week? <laughs> yeah, that's the, that was the name of my garage band. In, 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 um, and just, just to, as a reminder, Rush Limbaugh has been on the air and has been a powerhouse, a kingmaker in the Republican Party the last quarter century. So anyone in the Never Trump universe who wants to pretend this all started two years ago, three years ago, is lying to you. And the question you should be asking is, why do they keep lying about shit you can look up? How does that make them any better than Donald Trump? A correctional officer drove a truck into ICE protesters outside a private prison. Some of these protesters were treated at a hospital, though none were severely injured. The officer was wearing a badge and a uniform, and police officers at the protest did not intervene. The driver eventually walked into the prison after guards pepper sprayed the pepper sprayed the protesters these protesters with with a group called never again which is mm -hmm. working to prevent another holocaust folks yeah yeah and you know we say never again a lot and then it then it happens again it's like well yeah but this time is different it's not different it's not different uh this is comes directly from the department of shiny objects Donald Trump floated the idea of buying Greenland to aides in a meeting and at dinners and in passive conversations. And I don't give a shit about the story at all because it's never going to happen. And it's a distraction. And it's it ate Twitter today. Well, and, and it ate and, the news and, last and, night. Uh, the New Yorker humorist, Andy uh, Borowitz, Borowitz, thank you, Andy Borowitz, is mm -hmm. now uh, has an article up called uh, Denmark Plans to Buy the United States, Except for the Government. <laughs> Good they don't them. want that. They don't want the Trump government. Just, they can just <laughs> stay in the bin, you know. The Trump administration formally proposed regulation allowing some businesses to discriminate against workers on the basis of race, ethnicity, national origin, sex, and LGBTQ plus status by citing religious objections. Yeah. Yeah. We all need to become churches. That's pretty uh. clear. Uh, Steve King, remember him? Steve King, the, one of the worst people in the world, and guess which party he's in, defended banning all abortions with no exceptions for rape and incest and argued that if it were not for rape and incest, there wouldn't, quote, be any population of the world left. His Twitter stream is full of some really crazy, insane stuff today. Mm -hmm. And yeah. as I said to you earlier today, any place where I have worked, any office I have worked in in my entire life would have had personnel if Steve King was behaving, anyone was behaving the way Steve King is, would have personnel over there with a medical doctor or a police officer. Yeah. And a cardboard, and a cardboard box. box. And this is your last day. you uh -huh. from the premises immediately as a mm -hmm. danger to yourself and others. Yeah, yeah. Now, this is a, this is a story about the um, incestuous relationship, uh, which is the actual incestuous relationship between Fox News and the Trump administration. Fox business host David I want to say ass man, but I, you know, I might be wrong about that. Advised the uh, then Treasury Department spokesman, Tony Segi, about how the administration uh, should pursue tax cuts. Four days later, ass man emailed Segi to tell him that a significant portion of a Fox business show would focus on the administration's tax policies. Yay, what a coincidence. You'll like it, ass man said. Awesome, David, the guy whose name I can, cannot pronounce wrote back. You're the man. Uh, and Segi is a former... Fox News contributor. So there is no line anymore between the uh, Fox News propaganda arm of the uh, Republican Party and the uh, White House uh, elected government of the Republicans. There's just there's no difference between the two at all. If you're watching Fox News, you are watching propaganda and you should be ashamed of yourself. Well, except I watch it for work, and that's when youngest youngest well, yeah. child brings me a bottle of bleach for my brain. <laughs> yes, bleach. Here, mom. More wine, mommy? <laughs> yes, yes, more wine. Mm -hmm. 
Trump claimed without evidence that being president will cost personally cost him a billion trillion dollars. Actually, he said five billion dollars. Five billion dollars? Did he really say that? A billion, a billion trillion zillion gazillion dollars. Five billion dollars, give or take, rounding up from nothing. And, and that's yes. because of all the lawyers defending him in various lawsuits. Is he really yes. going to pay them? I that's another. I think thing. Alan Dershowitz is working. <laughs> Alan Dershowitz just works for massages, so you can just knock that right off. And the what top. about Rudy Giuliani? Um, I mean, same thing. Rudy right? Giuliani, yeah, he he works for. Um, well, well, his, that's his not ex-wife, we talk about his ex-wife has show. a lot to say about that because. Yeah. Uh, apparently that's come up in, in relitigating their divorce that just because he's working for Donald Trump for free doesn't mean he doesn't owe her. Uh, he said, oh, my income uh-huh. has dropped precipitously. Yeah, you decided to go work yes. for Donald Trump for free. That doesn't mean that your obligation uh-huh. to me in the divorce settlement is any way diminished. Yeah, but I'm poor now. Mm-hmm. No. And the judge mm-hmm. went, no. No. <laughs> You don't get to just work that quit way. charging your clients and say, I don't have to pay my ex-wife. Yeah, okay. Uh, go ahead. Uh, and speaking of people who get money for nothing and their chicks for free, um, you know, there's a thing called rescission where the White House, where the government takes back money that is unspent. Uh, the White House is looking to cancel billions of dollars in unspent funding already approved by Congress, except for funding for Ivanka Trump and Mike Pence's pet project. Mm-hmm. Isn't that sweet? The Dow Jones yeah. is whiplashing around like a snake with his head cut off. That's true. Yeah. Donald Trump called the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell clueless and blamed him for the, and this is all in caps because Donald Trump is a crazy old man, crazy inverted yield curve. He saw that He saw that on Again, the screen on Fox Business and decided to type it. Yeah. <laughs> he tweet about it. Again, I don't know how you can continue to be uh call yourself a decent human being if you follow this guy if you support this guy you're just not trump tried to take credit for the construction of shell's petrochemicals complex in western pennsylvania which will turn natural gas deposits into plastics this would have never happened without me uh and us (laughs) trump told a crowd of thousands of workers but mostly me mostly me us too but me (laughs) mostly Trump told a crowd of thousands of workers, Shell announced its plans to build this complex in 2012. (laughs) Oh, yeah. There's that little glitch. Who was president back then? I forget. Romney. It's Romney who did it. President Romney. Romney was going to win in a landslide. Remember that? The Romney administration really did a lot of good, and we uh, we don't really appreciate them for all they were. Uh, A coalition of 22 states and seven cities have sued to block the Trump administration from Uh, cutting back restrictions on coal-burning power plants, uh, saying that the EPA has no basis for weakening the clean power plan that sets limits on carbon dioxide and pollution from power plants. It's just, fuck you, Obama put it in place, I'm getting rid of it, and if you want to pollute the planet, I'm I'm, I'm 70-something years old, I'm not going to be around uh, very much longer, what do I care? And my constituents and my funders can make a few bucks polluting the planet, screw it, who cares? These people have got to go. Ken Cuccinelli is a disgusting pig. He is also acting director of the Citizenship and Immigration Services and believes that only immigrants who can, quote, stand on their own two feet are welcome in the United States. By the way, his last name is Cuccinelli. Yes. Cuccinelli. That's, that's a traditional yeah, American, American name, right, from the traditional American names box. Uh, the White House has ordered ICE officials to conduct even more workplace enforcement operations this year. Uh, after the raids in Mississippi led to the arrest of at least 680 undocumented workers, uh, ICE offices were told to identify at least two more locations. Um, now, in unrelated news, for nearly 20 years, the Trump organization itself has relied on undocumented Latin American workers at the company's winery and its golf courses from New York to Florida. The Trump administration has gutted the Endangered Species Act. Yes. Um, the U.S. fiscal deficit has already exceeded last year's total, and it's only it's an, August. It's a record. July was a record. Yeah. Never before. It never is. Never before. Never, biggest, the biggest, never before. Biggest deficit. Yeah. Biggest ever. Yeah. We're going to make a wall out of the deficit. It's going to keep out the Chinese or something like According that. According to the Washington Post, Trump has made 12,019 false or misleading claims over 928 days and is averaging 13 false or misleading claims per day. 
Now, now in local news, because we do like to bring you the news from the Midwest because nobody else will do it. Um, you can follow this under trade wars are good and easy to win. Farm bankruptcies in the Midwest have jumped 45% since Donald Trump started his insane trade war with China. And this was State Fair Week in Illinois, in Springfield, Illinois. Mm -hmm. We had pigs, we mm -hmm. had a horse show, a butter cow, and we had Steve Scalise. Speaking on Republican Day, there's a Republican Day at the fair, and then there, there used is. to be a Democratic Day, but now it's called Governor's Day. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Yes. That was that was nice. that was clever. The, so Steve Scalise rallied the faithful with a fight socialism banner. <laughs> yeah, and a red hammer and sickle banner oh in the crowd. God. I'm not sure he brought that, but that was the crowd oh he was talking God. to. Uh, these are the same people who write crackpot letters yeah. to the editor. In our local paper, who vote Republican, who turned this, uh, who who put Rodney Davis in office, and who believe Donald Trump is the second coming of Jesus. Got to fight socialism. Um, also, Nancy this, Pelosi came for Democratic Day uh -huh. and Governor's Day, and she, we didn't go see her because it was seventy five dollars a ticket. Yeah, and we can't afford yeah. that, so no. we did not go. But no. she did call uh, Mitch McConnell Moscow Mitch uh, at her speech at the Crown Plaza. She did? Uh, but she did not use the impeachment word. No, no. All right. She will. She she will be the last to do that. Uh, J. B. Pritzker's wife, who I believe is M. K. Pritzker, uh, paid seventy five thousand dollars for the prize steer at the state fair, which was fifteen thousand dollars more than the former first lady Diane Rauner paid for the prize steer last year. Now, to be fair, the Rauners did pay eighty four thousand dollars for the prize steer the year before that, because buying the prize steer. Having your multi-billionaire governor buy the prize here at the state fair is a thing here. I think it so, is. I think it is now the prerogative of the first lady to buy the prize steer. That that's some that's yes. a thing. I, so but we don't know if it's like uh, if it's like pardoning a turkey. <laughs> um, am I going to see like this steer working at uh, Floyd's thirst parlor slinging drinks, or am I going to see it at the uh, farmers market uh, selling bovine uh, excretia? I don't know. I don't know what happens to them. I think they are sent off to Bun Farm to make little baby cows, but I'm not sure. <laughs> well, that's possible. Uh, let me say the the teenager who had raised that prize steer burst into tears when he won the blue oh, yeah. ribbon, and and oh, that, no, this that was means everything. That was a big deal, and I'm grateful that he was he succeeded and got a blue ribbon and got to yes. sell it, it to the governor's wife. To and that was a very big deal to him. Yeah, and they should be very. I mean, we we've gone to the we visited uh, listeners at the. Uh, at the fairgrounds. At the fairgrounds with the sheep. sheep. Yeah. 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 And man, do they it's it's a whole thing. It's, they have the it's whole wonderful. lineage and wonderful. So no, it's this is wonderful. I this is a a, a wonderful this is the, the state fair. There's a lot of county fairs. This is the Illinois State Fair. It's a big deal. Uh, a couple of people from our family have gone this year and it's but it's not something you're gonna hear about. Uh, if in the you're national news, no, you're not. In the hey. national news or <laughs> from a New York or LA podcast, to be fair. <laughs> Uh -huh. Hey, each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. Drift Class, this week's Internet Kitty is Libby. Libby. And Libby has a habit that you will be very familiar with. Libby is a famous chair stealer. Oh, if God. If you stand yeah. up in your chair, yeah. uh, Libby will be sitting in that chair in a nanosecond. So She's the Paul, Paul Ryan of cats. So just <laughs> slip right in. Slip right in. Grab the gavel and wreck everything. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, we have that at our house. Drift Glass has an office chair in our bedroom that mm -hmm. if he's not sitting in it, then there's a cat sitting there right away. And no other chair do they do this to. This is <laughs> so just this is Libby. literally. I've, been, I've heard this from Libby. There are three other chairs in the room, but the only one Libby wants to sit in is the the owner's chair. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And yep. Libby, of course, likes freshly poured cat food. Whether you buy Pet Store Perfection or Dollar Store Dreck, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the only cat food they'll eat is freshly poured. So you can visit Libby at our Facebook page or website, and you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Drift Class, there are a whole bunch of new podcast outlets coming down the yes. pike. Yes, uh, we are. are now on Spotify and oh. we are now on something called Radio Public. 
Uh, these yeah. are places where you can listen to the podcast. And we understand from Radio Public that if we reach a certain level of listeners on Radio Public, they will actually start paying us for mm. our listens. So that's kind of a, interesting. I don't know if that'll ever happen, but... Will, um, they, will they count retroactively? No. <laughs> no, damn it. So, and, damn it. And most of these services put an ad before or after the podcast. Yeah. I don't sign up for anything where they at least announced to me that they're going to stick an ad in the middle of the podcast. So right. if, if any, anyone's putting ads on our podcast, please let, let us know, know if they're putting them in the middle. I understand at the beginning and the end, if you're in a service, that's fine. But if they're sticking it in the middle, we object to that. So yes, let us know. Mm -hmm. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is a labor of love and it's our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. It is time to get those Both Sides Don't t-shirts for back to school. It, it is. really is. It really is. It's boy. Right. So we have, and we have PayPal postal address information. You can write us a letter or send us an anniversary card. It's never too late to do that. We love you. We love hearing from you. Any, any way you reach us, all the details are there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media. And thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Blue gal, the Internet Kitties look forward to Bruce Willis's movie Hickenlooper, where a broken man travels back in time to kill his own candidacy. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the wine and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGB.